my name is Oliver and welcome to my workshop. Today is the first day working on the Diane and we're going to start with a win. We're going to we're going to start with something nice and easy to get the ball rolling. Or at least I hope it's going to be nice and easy. What we're going to do is we're going to fit some new shock absorbers. We have some fancy upgraded shock absorbers and I've never fit shock absorbers to a, a 2C Vera Diane before because my 2CV doesn't have shock absorbers. So this is a first for me. So let's get stuck in, shall we? So here I've got my box of shocks. And being an early 70s Diane, it only has shock absorbers at the rear, so we only needed two shock absorbers. And these are record, made in France, as all good uh, Citroen shock absorbers should be. And these are fancy upgraded, there we go, Maxi Gas Record. And these are fancy compressed gas shock absorbers. So basically, as they heat up, as the, uh, obviously, when your shock absorber is doing shock absorber stuff and absorbing shocks, the piston is going up and down at quite a rapid rate, which generates heat. That heat makes the oil inside the shock absorber thinner. And the gas helps keep the oil where it should be even though it goes thinner and uh, so you don't lose your shock absorber shock absorberiness as uh, as the shocks heat up basically and these are the better oh wrong end these are record maxi gas three three four nine zeros and like I said, made in France, new nuts as well, because from CP Re or the France home, not a paid promotion, it's just where I get most of my stuff. I wish they would give me stuff for free, I've given them enough money. <laughs> but we've got new nylock nuts as well, because of course it's a Citroen, so it uses a non-standard thread pitch, because Citroen didn't do anything standard. If you don't have camping kit mats, in your garage, you're missing out. They are the best idea ever. And I need a light because the uh, <laughs> the underneath of this car is black. And actually, in a previous video, I was talking about this and how I don't like the underneaths of cars to be black. You'll see exactly what I mean in a moment. <laughs> so last night, these have been wire brushed off and sprayed with lubricant or anti-seize stuff so hopefully this should come straight off so here we go there we go that was relatively painless There's one and a washer. I've got another bolt here. The sparrow's flying under the car to see what I'm doing. And our nut. And our crusty shock absorber comes straight. Ta-da! Ah, we have a lot of shale. That's just goo and gross. Right, these shock absorbers are totally blown, but we'll have a look at those in a minute. Now, this might look a little bit crusty, but we'll clean it all up and paint it afterwards. Let's just get it rolling first, and I'm going to clean these washers up now before we put them back on and make them uh, make them all nice again. So we have two skinny washers and two thick washers and uh, I'll clean them up with a wire brush on the drill head first. So gently just grab them up, get my drill, get the uh, wire brush head on it and just wire brush them up. Because we've got nice new hardware so there's no point having crusty washers with uh, nice shiny hardware is it? Eye protection when I'm using a wire brush because stuff flies everywhere. Of course. Now, I when it comes to 
painting parts of cars or parts of two CVs, my favourite stuff is this. This is cold galvanised, it's made by a bunch of different companies and it's made for painting the edges of guttering. You know the guttering you have on your house? The really expensive metal guttering that's grey is galvanised and when you chop the edge off it leaves a raw metal edge so they make this stuff so you can spray that edge and it doesn't rust. So it's designed to sit outside all day, every day, all year round, which is why I like it. And it's perfect for putting on the bottom of your car or on suspension components or anything like that. And it's not thick and it's not gloopy like a lot of sprays are and a lot of coatings are. And it's really fast drying as well, which is great. Got a piece of uh, welding rod. Stay. And a splashback so I don't get over spray everywhere. And also, it doesn't glob up the end of the spray can either. So you can use it, then not use the can for six months. Go back to using the can, and it's perfect again. But remember, spray it in a well ventilated area. Give it a couple of nice thin coats. There's no need to, to glob it on, and it's really thin stuff, so it does have a tendency to run, although the runs don't look that bad. So, while my first coat dries, I'm going to take the uh, other side off. This is one of those jobs that's perfect for someone that's not very mechanical and wants to do something mechanical for the first time. Really simple, minimum of tools, all it takes is attention to detail and a bit of patience. You could do it quick and sloppy, but my preferable manner is uh, attention to detail, make everything nice, clean it all up. Because if you do things nicely the first time, you don't have to do them again for a really long time. And then you can do other stuff rather than doing the same job, you know, twice or three times. And nobody wants to have rusty washers. So that's why I'm replacing the hardware. Also, this hardware you'll notice is this hardware is not nylon. Uh, a nylon is a, a a nut with a nylon collar in it. So it doesn't vibrate off. I'll keep these anyway in my box of stuff because I never throw anything away because it always comes in handy for something one day. Oh no, move our exhaust out of the way. This is a stainless steel exhaust and you may notice it hangs much higher up and much closer to the chassis than most. And the reason for that is we fit it and we've made a custom rear hanger to move it up out the way so it's out the way of rocks and ruts and stuff and doesn't get pulled off. A lot of 2CVs have the exhaust hanging really low down and uh, if you're going to knock something off it's the first thing that will knock off. And you've got a dirty thread it's better to crack it loose, loosen it slightly and if it starts to get firmer and firmer and firmer don't keep winding it up, winding it like trying to undo it tighten it slightly and then just get rid of the rubbish from around the thread and then have another go. It can make your life so much easier rather than fighting it. And I've gone to a, a, a ring spanner because the ratchet was a bit big, a little bit cumbersome. One of the reasons why I wear a flat cap when I'm doing any sort of dirty mechanical work, other than the fact that uh, I look nice in them, is it stops me running my hands through my hair subconsciously or unconsciously without thinking with dirty hands and making all my hair dirty and uh, getting all rust in my hair and stuff but also it stops my hair falling over my face and when you're on camera every day some days you just don't want to brush it <laughs> <laughs> But no, seriously, if you're working under your car, always wear safety glasses. 
because there will be some little bit of rust or under seal or just general crud that falls in your eye. I have never gone under a car and not had something fall in my eye when not wearing safety glasses. Uh, I even keep a set of safety glasses, a pair of safety glasses in my toolbox in the car because if you ever have an unscheduled rest stop um, and you have to go into your car for any reason at all, I guarantee you will get something in your eye. So keep a pair in your toolbox as well. Safety glasses are an absolutely vital thing in a workshop. I'm not Mr. Health and Safety, as you all know, but squinting is not eye protection. Right, let's get this off. Without banging into the exhaust. Come on, there we go. Ha ha! Another cool tip for spray cans is if you've almost finished your job and your spray can just runs out as you're finishing, so it's basically empty and won't spray, put it in a bucket of warm water for 10 minutes and you'll get that last little bit out of it because the gas is in spa inside warm up. Um, not something that I suggest doing with a brand new can because obviously there's a lot of compressed gas in there. But with a can that feels soft and you could, you know, you could actually squeeze it and crush it because there's nothing left in it, it might just get that last little bit out. It's a handy tip. And if you're in a rush to make things dry, you can use a hairdryer, but not in that much of a rush. So just to show you how destroyed and horrible these shock absorbers are. They're literally disintegrating in my hands, they're leaking. I can pull the, the dust cover back. Like that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's not healthy. Now, the recommendation by a lot of mechanics and a lot of shock absorber companies is to replace your shocks every 45,000 miles or so, whatever that is in kilometers. I'll put it up on the screen. So crunchy. Yeah, that's gonna give you your magic carpet ride. <laughs> These are knackered. But like I said, even if your shocks aren't leaking, most people will only replace shocks when they are leaking and knackered. But it's not really the way to do it. The way to do it is replace them after 45,000 miles anyway, even if they're not leaking and don't look knackered. Because over time, obviously, for every moment you're rolling down a road, your shock absorbers are working. It is a, just like your tires, it's a thing that is constantly moving and constantly working. And over time, your shock absorber performance just goes through the floor. And you might not even notice until you put new shock, absor shock absorbers on. And then you're like, oh my God, these are fantastic. And that's because it's an incremental loss so you don't notice it. But uh, yeah, new shock absorbers are a very good thing. And they're not that hard to change, as we've all just discovered. And if you do it before they were leaky and gross, it's a much cleaner and nicer job. So, while I'm waiting for my washers to dry, there's a little job you need to do with these before you put them on, and that is to compress them and decompress them five times. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a cheap crosshead screwdriver through either end, one end to stand on and one end to push against, like this. I'm gonna make sure it's all the way out, compress it all the way in, So that's all the way in, all the way out one, two, three. Four. 
an excellent ab workout this and five I just need to do it with the other one now and the thing to remember now is not to tip them upside down so I have to keep them this way up until I put them in and there's a sticker on them that says top so keep you there where I won't knock you over I've said it before in videos, but it's always worth assuming, even if you've done a job before, assume you know nothing and look it up again in your manual and read the instructions just in case. Because things like this happen. You may notice that these shock absorbers go the other way around because they compress gas shock absorbers than the standard shock absorbers. And if I hadn't have read the instructions, I would have put them on backwards. So it just goes to show, it's always worth reading your instructions. The only other piece of specialist kit that you'll need to do this job is some copper slip. And we're going to slather that onto the studs before we put the shock absorbers on. As I bash my elbow on the uh, chassis table. washer now and I'm going to put a bit of copper slip on it on the back where the chamfer is because the chamfer the chamfer fits against this area and I'm going to put a bit on the face as well just as a, a bit of extra protection Now we get our shock absorber, now we flip the sticker the other way around because both stickers are on the same way around and that'll never do. <laughs> and remember that the dust cover on these goes towards the back according to the instructions. Put the lid on the copper slip because I've got enough of it on me. No, I need to sit on it. There we go, pop our nice washers on. And our nylock nuts, so this will never come undone, unless we want it to. Right, so this is really important. I'm not gonna tighten these up fully until we've got both on and we've actually bounced the car up and down a little bit to let it all settle and then we'll just tighten them up. Ah, I need it on that side anyway. <laughs> right, so still loose, look. Now we've got to put the other side on. I will point out as well, this not being my car, if it was me, I'd take the stickers off because I don't like stickers of any sort. But uh, it's not my car, so we flip the sticker, so it's now the right way up. There we go. I should point out that this anti-seize um, copper slip isn't grease. It's not lubricant. It's there to stop things seizing up rather than lubricant. Because, of course, it doesn't actually lubricate anything. Because it doesn't rotate. I've pre-compressed this one. I haven't made the same mistake. Last time it was extended and it wouldn't go in. But I will need somebody to sit on the boot in order to compress it. There we go. Haha, <laughs> this is the ultimate nerdiness. I'm using French-made Facom spanners to tighten up French-made shock absorbers on a French made car.
and now we can tighten it up. Right, that was an easy job, wasn't it? Now all that's left to do is take the chuck from behind the front wheel and let's go for a spin and, uh, and a bit of a test drive, see how it handles. I'll be really interested to see how it handles. It's a very different driving car to my 2CV. And last time I drove it, it was quite understeer it. So I'm interested to see how it uh, how it's going to handle. Now it's got proper shock absorbers because I don't think those old ones are actually doing anything. All right, let's get cleaned up and uh, go for a spin, shall we? So here we are, and it's it's very different to how it was. One of the problems with reviewing cars and testing of classic cars is it can often be difficult to differentiate the difference between this car and all cars like this. So for example, this Diane and all Diane's. Because obviously it's been 40 odd years since this car was made and in that time it's had a life and it's, uh, it's been places and it's done things and it's been worked on and parts have been changed and so this particular Diane will pick up character traits that aren't shared with other Dianes. So two cars that came off the production line together can feel totally different. And it's often difficult when reviewing them to say, well, it's actually all Dianes are like this or all Dianes are like that because that's not necessarily the truth. And my overwhelming thought when driving a Diane for the first time, this Diane, was understeer and we just wait to get to get around this corner but it feels there's a little bit more vibration from the back and that's because these gas filled struts are firmer than uh, than standard but there is a lot less understeer than there used to be like hardly anything it's much firmer the the front end grip is much better the steering feels more responsive it's um, it's much better than it was. It felt very. I'm trying not to be unkind, but it felt very washed out before, especially on like an off camber gravelly corner. Which, like you can see, these are the roads that I drive on every day, and uh, off camber gravelly corners are a thing that happens. You know, potholes are a thing that happens. And um, it, it felt very understeer, it felt very washed out, it felt very muted compared to my 2CV. Now I'm not going to say that this feels like my 2CV because it doesn't um, at all. It feels much firmer than my 2CV, much, much firmer. It feels torquier than my 2CV, obviously, this of the 602 engine. But it feels more grown up, is the, uh, the way that I put it. And the shocks have, have really brought that out. These brand new shocks have really, really brought that out. There's much more road feel. Um, and by that I don't mean like steering feel, I mean I could feel the road through the seat of my pants. It's very connected, it's, it's responsive. And it feels like the back end doesn't float around on you at all, whereas it used to with the old blown shocks, which are probably the originals from 1974. Even at low speed, it's a lot less understeer. You know, I'm doing, what, 45 kilometers an hour, 40 kilometers an hour in the wet. So obviously not pushing the limits of performance in any way, but this is the way that you actually drive this Diane. I find that Dianes have a luxury to them, which my 2CV being a 425 doesn't. This has torque, and it, it's funny to uh, funny to say that a, a 602cc car has like stump pulling torque, but in comparison to my car, which has you know the pulling power of a small dog um, rather than a horse, <laughs> this thing you can just waft it on. And, uh, and it's very, very nice. Yeah, there is a, a little bit more noise from the rear. There's, there's a little bit more vibration, I should say, coming through the back of the chassis. I don't think it's noise. But it's 
Very nice. I tend to drive my 2CV a lot faster than I drive this when I'm driving this, just because this has the torque. But it's it's interesting that this now feels the 11 years newer than it is than my 2CV. This feels now like the more modern car. And I'm, I think in my Diane review, I said that it didn't feel 11 years newer. It didn't feel 11 years more modern. And now, now it actually does. The uh, the shock absorbers have actually updated it. They've, they've refreshed it and made it much, much better. Now, normally, what I would have done, we're heading into some uh, some twisty bits here, so this will, uh, will really test the handling of our little dial. Normally, what I would have done is I would have taken the back of the car apart, taken the fuel tank out, and all of that, and started cleaning it all up and sorting it all out. But I wanted to do just the shock absorbers first. One, because it's an easy job. But two, if you're at home and you just want to do your shock absorbers, I wanted you to be able to just do your shock absorbers and see how I've done them. Because it's a very simple job and there's absolutely no need to feel like you can't do it yourself. So, I didn't want to take the whole car apart and put the whole car back together again. think of these shock absorbers I really like them actually they are really nicely riding they're not crashy they don't feel too much they don't feel too firm which is something that I actually was concerned about my dad was like oh it'd be fine they'll be great they'll be brilliant and uh, he was completely right I was concerned that 
they'd firm the two CV up too much, they'd die up too much, and that they'd feel, like I said, that they'd, they'd be over sported because the last thing that you want to do is firm a two CV up too much. And uh, this being much firmer than my car, of course. But it's really nice. I really like the way it rides, I really like the way it handles. It's very different to my car, but actually, it's now more like my car than it was before with the balloon shock absorbers. It's much nicer. And I bet there's a bunch of 2CVs, Dianes and Ami 8s out there driving around with balloon shock absorbers that could really benefit from a really good quality set like this. I'm, I'm really happy. It took less than a morning's work. It was nothing, even filming it. Uh, you, I bet I could do it in, well, it depends how long it takes for the paint to dry on the washers. Like that was the, that was the biggest amount of work. And um, having, to, having someone just to sit on the boot was handy as well in order to get them on because being gas struck shock absorbers, they want to extend the self all the time. So compressing them to put them on was um, was a bit of a challenge because you compress them to put them on, then you go to put them on and they start to extend. Um, so yeah, having someone to sit on the boot was uh, was handy, although you could have just you know filled the boot full of stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Thank you all for watching. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Please be awesome to each other and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye. Oh no, traffic. <laughs> That's the first car we've seen. <laughs> I love living here, it's brilliant.